and show starring Mr. B comes to you and live in color on NBC. a masquerade party. <laughs> this is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for Kraft. Kraft for good food and good food ideas, such as these king-size sandwiches we're making from toasted French bread spread with Kraft mayonnaise, on which we put heated and drained Del Monte sliced pineapple. We're giving each sandwich three Kraft American Deluxe slices, and we'll top them with cooked bacon before broiling them to get these Hawaiian cheese sandwiches with juicy hot pineapple and melting cheese goodness. For the best-tasting pasteurized processed cheese you can buy, get the only Deluxe Slices. Kraft Deluxe Slices. <laughs> And now, live from Burbank, California, it's Milton Berle, the reason radio is so popular, starring in the Kraft Music Hall with his guest stars, The Perfect Fool, Ed Wynn, and Frankie Avalon with Mary Beth Hughes, plus the sound of Billy May. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our star, Mr. Milton Berle. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. That's what I like, Faith. <laughs> I, I appreciate your applause. Remember, no, ma no matter what happens later, you can't take it back. <laughs> oh, before I go any further, I have a news bulletin that just came over the air. Batista is coming to Los Angeles. He's going to open his own country. <laughs> Boy, I want to tell you, the United States is getting a lot of visitors from other countries. Other countries, really. Batista, McCoyan, Bob Hope. <laughs> Incidentally, Bob, if you're listening, I have a message for you. This is the last day for an alien to register. <laughs> I'm, I'm only clowning. Right now, Bob Hope is doing a wonderful job entertaining our fighting boys, the supermarket clerks. <laughs> and, uh, and Soviet Premier McCoyan, he went back to Russia after his meeting with President Eisenhower. What a meeting, boy. It lasted for an hour and 45 minutes. Actually, they only talk for 15 minutes, then they watch Playhouse 90. <laughs> Eisenhower really had a busy week with all the visitors. He, I, I read in the paper, he even got a visit from uh, Kim Novak. Really, he took one look at her and he said, now I realize how tired I am looking at Linda Johnson. <laughs> and boy, what excitement when Kim Novak showed up at the White House. All the Secret Service men lined up to Frisca. <laughs> I don't know where Eisenhower finds all that time for visitors with his problems that he's having. Balancing the budget, he wants $77 billion. When someone asked him how he's going to get it, he said, uh, don't ask me, I never carry more than $50 in cash. <laughs> and when Khrushchev heard about Eisenhower asking for $77 billion, he said, we're trying to hit the moon and you're trying to buy it. <laughs> Sullivan heard that Ike was going to balance the budget. He flew to Washington to see the act. <laughs> now, uh, you know, you, ima can you imagine next, uh, next year Ike plans to spend $77 billion? Of course, everybody envies Amy. Look at all the green stamps she's going to get. <laughs> and I want to tell you something. He'll need that much money because of the inflation. Inflation, you know what that means? That means that your money today won't buy as much as it would have during the Depression when you didn't have any. I'm not kidding. I'm not 
not kidding that that inflation is really murder. Yesterday, I put a dime in a jukebox and I got one McGuire sister. <laughs> and I, while, I, while we're on the subject of politics, did you read where the Democratic Convention will be held in Los Angeles? <laughs> I thought they were trying to help smog. <laughs> You may think it's kind of early for the Democrats and Republicans to start preparing for the 1960 presidential election, but just to keep in practice, Stevenson and Dewey are already sending each other telegrams conceding defeat. <laughs> but when the convention arrives here, I suggest that they nominate the man that brought them safely to California, Ward Bond. I mean, they selected Los Angeles for the convention because the city is really growing. According to the census, by 1960, Los Angeles will be the most populated city in the world. We may do it with the Crosbys alone. <laughs> you should see Bing's new baby. Oh, Tex, what a beautiful sight. Bing and the baby having breakfast together, both eating mush. <laughs> And now, <laughs> I love that one. That, uh, and, now, and now for those who have just tuned in, you missed 14 shows. But enough, <laughs> enough of these jokes. Let's get started. I don't, I don't know why I'm standing out here telling you jokes when we have a really great comedian standing backstage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the Dean of American Comedy, the fabulous perfect fool himself, Mr. Ed Wynn. Let's bring him on. You know, Ed, I, I just can't help admiring you. I really mean this. For years, just think, a successful comedian for over 50 years, and then suddenly you became a dramatic actor. <laughs> Ed, what's the secret of your success? Failure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm heading in the right direction. <laughs> Ed, I hear, I hear that you're up for a big dramatic part in a new picture. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. They want me to play a 16-year-old boy. I <laughs> You, you, Ed Wynn, a six... You a boy? 16-year-old boy. It's yeah. one of those horror pictures. Horror you know. pictures? Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Well, the title... It's called, uh, I Was a Teenage Old Man. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> well, I don't like to brag myself, but I, I, I may turn dramatic myself this year. I've been offered a very important part on Wagon Train. Oh. Yeah. Are they adding another mule? <laughs> yes, <they're... laughs> <laughs> well, I'm kidding. Look, if you're going to be funny, and I think one of us should be, I no. wish. <laughs> <you're great. laughs> I wish Ed. Oh, you're the doll. You're the doll. I wish Ed that you would do the character that you first made famous. You know, the perfect fool with the funny costumes and, and, and the makeup. Would you do that for us? You want me to be? Uh, you know, the, the perfect. I'll make up. You mean like this here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? What happened? What's the matter? Who is this? Who is this? Why, Ed, that's me. <laughs> Thank heavens, I thought it was me. <laughs> you know, I want to tell you, I've admired that man for over 40 years, and now I'd like to introduce a young fellow I've admired for over 40 minutes. <laughs> now, I'm kidding, because ever since I heard this young fellow sing, and he's a real singing sensation, I've wanted him to present him to my audience. Ladies and gentlemen, and girls, here is young Frankie Avalon. Pretty eyed baby, pretty eyed baby, pretty eyed baby. We can have a lot of fun, yes, a lot of fun, cause you are, you're the cutest one. You're so sweet, walking up and down the street. Oh, pretty eyed baby, you're the cutest one. I'm so glad you're wise, and I love, love, love your eyes. Baby, can you see? But you were meant for me, pretty eyed baby. We can have a lot of fun, yes, a lot of fun, cause you are, you're the cutest one. We can have a 
a lot of fun, yes, it's a lot of fun, cause you are, you're the cutest one. He's terrific. Really, I want to tell you, Ben, Ben, one more, thank you. How do you oh, shut up. I'm, I'm only kidding because I want to, how do you like this boy? How old are you, 18? 18, you, this, this, 18, he thinks. That's all he is. He thinks Sal Minio is the grand old man of show business. No wonder your record, I got your album, the Chancellor album, no wonder your record is uh, uh, selling terrific. Really, uh, really terrific, kid. Thank you, Mr. Burrell. I don't really... And now, uh, would you do me a favor? Sure, I'll do anything. What? My mother asked me to please be sure yeah. and get the address from Kraft yeah. for those dish towels. This boy's gone far. <laughs> oh, Ed Hurley, please come in and tell Mrs. Avalon about the towels just the way I told you to say it. Take it, Ed, take it, please. Take it. Frankie's mother knows a good bargain, Milton, because Kraft has a wonderful bonus for you. New terry cloth dish towels woven by Cannon Mills. They'll dry all your dishes without a speck of lint. Look at that glass sparkle. This thirsty terry cloth cuts dish wiping time in half and never needs ironing. These Cannon terry cloth dish towels with their gay pattern come in four beautiful fast color combinations hand screened by Royal Terry of California. Three are equal to a regular $1.77 value. But Kraft offers you all three for only $1.00. When you get Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese spread, that's so good for all kinds of cheese dishes and sandwiches. Buy two boxes of Velveeta any size. Send the two red K end flaps with your dollar. Choose the perfect color combination for your kitchen from the pictures on this coupon that you'll find in every Velveeta box. The towels are an extra bonus when you give your family more of milk's vital food values the Velveeta way. Kraft's nutritious Velveeta is full of health. From Milk. 